Ça a fait tout le monde, ça a fait. Il y a un problème. Il y a un problème. Mais ils ont fait une vidéo sur le créole, mais je ne comprends pas le créole très bien parce que le moment où je parle le créole, je réponds en anglais. Et ça ne fait pas qu'à faire une vidéo sur le créole. Mais pas de problème. Je ne connais pas le garde, je ne connais pas le garde. Je ne sais pas si je suis ici, je ne sais pas si je parle le créole. Oh, saisi! Oh God, I feel so ashamed. <laughs> I couldn't make the Haitian Flag Day in Miami, uh, the festivities in Miami, because I was busy celebrating my nephew's birthday. The little kid with the cake on his face. Yeah, that's my nephew. And as you can see uh, by his facial structures and skin complexion, he's going to be faced with some identity questions when he gets older, because he won't be able to completely identify with his white father, and he won't be able to identify completely with his Haitian mother. He's going to be somewhere in between. But society will force him to choose one. They will call him a black male, a light-skinned black male. And he's going to have to face that, that, that sort of juggling thing that we do in society. He will also face colorism in the extremely diverse, non-homogeneous black community. Black is such a broad classification because of the variations in skin colors. Even genetics among blacks is completely different. And when you're the cultural minority in a majority dominated country, you would try to combine your influences and try to get in where you fit in. You also learn the art of code switching, knowing how and when to use certain tools in certain contexts in different settings. Race, human classification is a deep topic, so I'm going to keep this short. I was born as a dark-skinned American. Two Haitian immigrants gave birth to me in Miami. And I have to tell you, my skin did not afford me any privileges among the dark-skinned African-American community. Why? Because we were culturally and linguistically different. We were somewhat hated and almost despised by African-Americans and even Jamaicans when I was growing up, um, despite Haiti's rich history. <laughs> I, I used to ponder as a child, am I Haitian American or am I African American? Because I was always referred to as African American and oftentimes you get tired of constantly explaining to white folks or people who are non-black that hey, I'm not African American, I'm Haitian American and yada yada yada. And then when I went to Asia and I spent time in Asia, Koreans in particular obviously regarded me as African first before American. Little kids would come up, oh, oh, oh ma. Africa, Africa, and mom be like, stop pointing at him. <laughs> Some parents wouldn't stop their child from pointing, and that made me angry. But still, I was African. And then I met Africans in Korea, and then I realized I'm not African. Culturally, I'm not African, but I am African. It's so complicated, man. Identity is like a pimple on your face. You often forget it's there until you look in the mirror or until someone else points it out to you. So to conclude, I'm human, I'm black, I'm American, I'm Haitian American, I'm African American, I'm African, I'm all of these socially defined markers. May is Haitian Heritage Month. My nephew was born on Haitian Flag Day, I was born on May 25th, and I know we can argue all day about why race is or isn't a social construct, but one thing is for sure, humans can create cultures and subcultures. Celebrating it doesn't make me any less American. It's simply a show of respect for a country that deserves more respect, despite its shortcomings. I teamed up with my good internet friend Wanda. Uh, she's the owner of Le Union Suite, a wonderful blog uh, highlighting the Haitian culture, its food, its people, its fashion, everything you need to know. Go on her blog to check it out. I've also took some images from the Haitian American um, Facebook page, which has over 62,000 likes on there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to share some facts about Haiti um, while you know, uh, showing you some pictures. So I hope you enjoy and um, hope to hear from you soon. All right. One love. Peace. So let's begin. This is the 211th anniversary of the flag. The indigenous people, the Taino, or I think it's Taino, Arwak, named their land Aiti, meaning the land of high mountains. Haiti was also the second country in the world to issue a declaration of independence, only 33 years after the United States of America. The first and only country in the history of mankind whose independence 
is the result of a successful slave rebellion. We should also give thanks to Toussaint Louverture, who also celebrates his birthday in May, and to Jean-Jacques Dessalines for their leadership in the revolution. The first country in the Western Hemisphere to abolish slavery, it would take the United States of America another 65 years to follow suit. The independence of Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Venezuela uh, Venezuela is actually a great partner of Haiti, was a result of direct monetary and military help from Haiti to Simon Bolivar, one of the greatest Hispanic military leaders of all time. <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even a Haitian song. It's Martinique, I think. Right. Yeah, What's your favorite compas song? Oh, my favorite compas song is Tabu. Tabu? Tabu is my favorite. Dasha. <laughs> And um, uh, Tabu is my favorite of all. Tabu is Kasha. Oh, my favorite. Haiti also occupied the Dominican Republic for 22 years. It was known as the Spanish Haiti at the time. Do you know about the Louisiana Purchase? Well, Haiti forced France to sell to the U.S. its Louisiana territory, doubling the size of the United States of America. Upon independence, Haiti became the first country in the American continent to constitutionally grant all its citizens full rights regardless of gender or race. For over a century, the livelihood of as many as 25 million inhabitants of France directly depended on the colonial trade centered in Haiti. Haiti supplied France for over half the wealth it derived from all its other colonies combined in the 18th century. Here's another interesting fact. Spanish explorers came face to face with a female Haitian ruler named Anna Cona, or Golden Flower, in 1503, who basically resisted them. Another fact, uh, Frederick Douglass was an ambassador to Haiti. So, I'm going to so nostalgic. Okay. <laughs> and uh, everybody who's watching the video, hi, I'm welcome, mom. Wow. Oh, and wow. hi, I love wow. you guys. Wow. Now I'm gonna eat her face. <laughs> <laughs>